The Four Seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's also a new series starring Steve Carell and Tina Fey. That'll be good. Did they write it as well, or Tina? Don't know. At least wrote it. Yeah. I like their rom- rom-com, uh, I think it was called. The Four Seasons? No. Uh, what was it called? Steve Carell and uh, Date Night. It was called Date Night. I never saw Date Night. That's good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reacts of course. <laughs> I'm Tina Fey. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you, everybody, for on Patreon. Follow us to the account, subscribe, like button. Today, we got an interview with the one and only Fahat Fasil. Unfortunately, he's not talking to us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, Fahat Fasil, also known as Fafa. But this is uh, Fahat talking to... Um, Bard Bajrangan. Yes. Um, for his new film. He doesn't do a lot of interviews. Nope. Um, not a lot. Nope. Um, but this is obviously for his new film, which we did not get here. No. Uh, but we've heard rave reviews about yep. his performance. We have. Uh, and if he's talking about acting and his craft, I, I, I know one thing that he talked about in here because I've seen it go viral. About he, t- he tells people that there's more to life than uh, watching cinema. Why would you say that? Which is ridiculous. Why would you say that? I would much rather watch cinema than have intercourse. You? Always. I'd I'd rather watch cinema than bathe or eat plums or fondle my own appendages. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. GT Holidays, South India's cheeky number holidays. one travel brand. Yeah, I like to go on cheeky holidays, you know what I'm saying? Killing everyone everywhere. It's when I'm wearing a thong. That's a cheeky holiday. Hello, Fahad. Welcome to Galata Plus. Thank you for limping your way here. <laughs> your leg is not okay. Yeah, that's you right. You slipped and fell and, 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 and <laughs> kind of a thing. But you don't like giving interviews. It's not, it's not that I don't like. It's just that I don't know what to talk. It's because I don't talk, I make films. You know, my, uh, that's the easiest uh, way for me to communicate to the when audience. When you're at home with your wife, huh? you talk. No, we don't have to talk cinema, right? Interview, I'll only have to talk about cinema. And there's nothing much I talk about cinema. I, I'd like to do cinema than talk about it. Or... Aren't there people that your friends like Amal or uh, Sham or somebody mm-hmm. like that, where you say, oh, I saw this great movie, this is what this thing is. the thing, I never talk about cinema to these people. I talk, talk. I, I, I talk my personal stuff. You and Sham Pushkar and run a studio. We never talk cinema, we never talk cinema. Like, I, I, I oh, go wow. to him, he tells me about something he read somewhere, he tells me about someone he met somewhere. Or he tell me about a story that, uh, you know, one of the director friends told someone. So it's never about, do you see that film? Or can we do something like that? I, I, not a single time I've had a conversation like that. And, and to be honest, Dilish Podhan doesn't watch any films other than his films. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so for me, okay, with Amal, we, we do talk a lot about cinema because he's, he's an encyclopedia. You go and ask him. So, uh, Chata, which was that film, uh, uh, you know, that, that came out in the 80s and, you know, he'll, he'll easily give you that. So, so my uh, prep or my, uh, you know, my interactions with the close circle are never about cinema. It's more about life and it's, it's about what I see out of my window. You know? So, you're saying that it would be easier to do this interview if I were to ask you about... It'll be easy for me Nazaria, to... How is she at home? Okay. Yeah, how, what, oh, all, what? all that's good. But if you ask me about Aveshim, I'll say it's easier for me to show you the film than talk about it. Right, yeah. right, but, right. About, and we are going to talk about Aveshim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but about my wife, I can, I can talk how much of you want. Yeah, but yeah. this is unfortunately not that kind of interview. So. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so... Uh, but I hope she's good. Yeah, you know, I'm just, so, But... Uh, Rich you producer. Know, yeah? Rich producer, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just looking at your filmography and I realized that your last few films... You haven't had, like, a heroine. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm like, is he deliberately choosing films where... My you know, director, my director. Yeah. So someone asked Jitu, how come there's no heroine in Aveshan? Yeah. And he immediately said, there's, there was no heroine in uh, Romanjim as well. Yeah. That's when he realized, oh, my God, I don't have any, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, because even 
Nazira's role in Trance. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are glimpses of it. Yeah, uh, yeah But yeah. There are, there's actually no, like, you know, the, the man-woman thing that never happens for you in your movies. I'm, I'm going to look at it. I'll look into it. So I've done only what excited me. There was no plan or, you know, there was, there was no intention to such kind of films. Right. I just did what excited me. Right. Uh, but yeah, I want to explore more with the man. Yeah, movements. because even even in Pacho, uh, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is the film yeah. that I really liked, it's more about cheating and this and that. Yeah, it was yeah. not like a Kiran I, I know, I know, I know. Like I a know. romantic. Uh, and also, um, you know, every time I think about doing a love story, uh, the taste is also a factor, right? So I I want to do something which is today's Maunaragam or you know something like that, and right? It's not easy. I mean, you know, yeah. the world's so, changed so much. It's not easy to, uh, you know, give your take on a uh, <laughs> marriage that easily now. Right. So I want to discuss something, but it's yeah, it's too early to. Say yeah, that because thing. I'm thinking of at one point there was something like Anil and Rasulum, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. But I, like for the longest time, yeah, yeah. You know, you've been uh, either a no, married I, person. I'd love like to Bharati. do a revolutionary road. I I, I dream to do something. That'd be interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That'd be very yeah, interesting. He knew with his wife. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Avisham, you're, the, 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 who dreamt up this reintroducing Fahad Fasil thing? I think everyone. I think primarily the discussion started from uh, Jitu only, I think. Jitu and Nazriya started talking about it. And so we never thought of having that as a, uh, what do you call, on the uh, titles or anything, but and eventually, everyone who started seeing the film somehow were excited about seeing a new me or, you know. Uh, so, then eventually everyone decided, okay, fine, this, let's just reintroduce him. And I was not giving any promotions or anything. So, they wanted something to <laughs> push the film, yeah. And, yeah, so. But why reintroduce? Is it because a Fahad Fasil zone is usually something else? And you're pushing yourself into a new zone. Was that the thought behind the whole thing? That's one. Two, I've never approached a film like this. Um, I've never been worried if audience would like a moment or is, that, is, is the moment massy enough. No. For me, it was all about, okay, let's stay within the cinema and decide. You know, let's just stay within the narrative and take a call. But with Avisham, I've, you know, I've, I've let that uh, doors open and explore, you know, like, you know, let's just go one, one tad, uh, you know. Uh, so with Avisham, the attempt was always that, to just go a little above my usual, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, no, boundaries or whatsoever. Picture, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at it, Avesham is actually uh, written for the audience in the sense that the film is actually moving with the audience than with the character or, uh, you know, uh, any of the other right. factors. Right. So, I've not approached anything like that earlier. Um, for me, it was very. I wanted the na screenplay to move organically, and uh, so with Avisham, no, I said no, no, no. Let's 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 try, try something else. Or, so, I mean, Jitu came to me with something, which is which is very commercial, and you know, so uh, maybe uh, I've not approached anything like that before. That's, that's the main reason why Avisham is so new to me. You know, the way I saw it, you're still within character hmm. in hmm. the movie. It's not like you're. Mm. Uh, within the, the character of Ranga as well. Ranga, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're pretty true to that. It's not yeah, like yeah. you're just doing masks for the heck of it. You know, it's like a yeah. But it's it's um, isn't it very hard to stitch this thing? You know, I mean, you have to see every uh, detailing that you've always given for your characters. At the same time, he's loud. Uh, at the same time, uh, there's love in him. There is concern. Uh, there is another side. So there's a sadness in him. There's a sadness in him. Yeah. So to stitch all that to a character like this, a character who's so loud, I think that was a that was a little challenging to bring in all these elements to someone like that. And I'm not the first person to do that. Mamuka has done it so royally with Rajamani Kim. Yeah. You know, the attempt was to remind people of. A, a character played by another hero 20 years back or, you know, I, I wanted to bring back the uh, excitement of watching an old film yeah. in, in, in screen, yeah. And, and that was what Jitu's... Absolutely. So, uh, so Jitu is a very interesting person to interact with, like, you know, uh, I think he's a, he's a director I took the longest to crack, I think. Uh, we were into shoot and so we started with the, uh, the, the bar episodes where I made the kids and all that. Uh, we're shooting, we're shooting, he's moving on, like, third, fourth day shoot, and I ask him, is it falling place? 
And he's like, yeah, it'll fall, it'll fall. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not... So it took a long time for us to crack his energy, I mean, Ranga's energy or the way he spoke to the kids. <coughs> so one example he gave me was, he's a, he's a center of a circle. And his distance to everyone is the same. He's like, I mean, the, the radius is the same to everyone. So whoever he wants to get closer to, he'll call them inside. Yeah. So that was a very interesting description that I got. He's mm -hmm. the center of the circle and every, everyone is on the... Uh, you know, the diameter, yeah. I mean, the... So, and he would call people he wants, so he would call Amba and he would call the boys, he would call Nanjapa, and everyone is pushed back to the other, uh, you know. So that was a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this thing he gave me. So, so, I mean, we worked around all that and I didn't do it alone. Uh, Ranga wouldn't be Ranga if Samir Dhaib was not there, Sushin Sham was not there, uh, Ashwini was not there, so... We all brought him together, I guess. What is the difference between playing a larger-than-life character like Ranga versus a larger-than-life character in a larger-than-life movie like Pushpa? Pushpa itself is a larger... Than, so, the setting is larger-than-life, right? Uh, Aveshim is set in Bangalore. You, yeah. you, you, you see Bangalore, like, you know, you land in Bangalore, you know where, where Aveshim is happening. The Pushpa... Uh, you know, it, one, it's set in the 90s and, you know, I mean... The geography is set, the characters are set. So, uh, everything is set for Pushpa. Uh, Avesham, we've set the film in, a, in the right geography, or you know. So, I think the approach is different. His and, English uh, is similar to Johnny uh, Depp. Pushpa can be set anywhere. Right, right. Uh, Avesham cannot be set anywhere. Right. right, so you're saying that there you're playing a larger-than-life character in a movie that's larger-than-life. Absolutely, absolutely. And here, you're playing a larger-than-life character in a very normal... Uh, regular surrounding. Regular surrounding, you may say, but that regular surrounding, Avesham regular uh, surrounding is a little, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of above for the normal uh, Malayalam films. But right. uh, but the approach is what is different for Pushpa and uh, right, Avesham. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when it comes to, again, reintroducing you and from your... See, there was a phase when... Uh, see, according to me, there are two phases of Malayalam cinema in recent times. One is the time the, the pandemic happened, yeah. uh, started, and suddenly people started watching, a, a, like a lot of films, typically, like, like your own See You Soon, mm -hmm. Kumbalangi Nights, yes. all these films kind of got, broke out yeah, of yeah. the people that typically watch Malayalam cinema mm -hmm. and found a large, like mm -hmm. a bigger audience outside. Yeah. And suddenly people were talking about them. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And the second big it's thing us. is this year, mm -hmm. when suddenly, like, Malayalam cinemas are quite a life of its own, mm -hmm. because... In a sense, if you look at it, even last year we had uh, like like Mamuti doing Nanpakal Nertamayakam, Kadal, and and Kanul uh, squad. So all like commercial, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, artistic things. Uh, not that the two are uh, separate yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had RDX, which was like a yeah, huge yeah, hit yeah. among yeah. the youth, and mm -hmm. which I would say was an action version of Premolo, whatever yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. So you did have films last year, but somehow this year the conversation seems to have been about how everything is broken out. What's your take on that? I'm just analyzing it because uh, having produced Premlu and Abhishek, uh, th th there, is a, there is a huge sur surprise factor with the trade. I mean, you know, everyone has been discussing about it. There's a huge growth of 40 to 50 percent uh, theatrical revenue and everything. One, yeah. primarily, I believe all the films are very good. Whether it's Manjimal Boys or Premlu or Brahma Yugam or Vashnal mm -hmm. Kishashim. Ar Arjivitam. Arjivitam. Another yes, surprising yes, yes. because Absolutely, you think yeah. a movie that serious, Absolutely. you're Absolutely. doing these kind of numbers Absolutely. is amazing. Yeah. So, so one is that I think uh, the films were very much inviting to the audience and all the films were so mm -hmm. different from each other. Very much. And that's a plus. I could probably I think, do his you know, voice. And, uh, and audience were ready to explore that in theatres. Secondly, uh, like I said, the the... The trade has grown, uh, the... but Malayalam cinema, even now, uh, doesn't have a solid backup of a internet platform. Or we need to prove in theaters for any of these things to come in. So it's not like rest Which of the India. Theaters where here the would, films, uh, almost yeah, eighty percent films are sold even before the shoot has started. Our model is not that. We need to finish the film, release the film, prove the film, and then. So I, I think. That way, we are more self-sufficient now, I think, you know, I mean, we are very... Uh, we understand the importance of making a film that's different, yeah. that will make noise. So, I think everyone is on that mode now, you know, let's, let's, let's make films that 
you know, that sort of reach out and then the rest of the, whether it's business or the, uh, the exposure of the film get, you know, let, 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 that, let that be second. <coughs> but let's, let's try and make a noise here. Right. So in this new age, let me, let me say, or new era, or whatever it is, is it going to be difficult to make your Mahesh Inda Pradikarams or the Tonti Mutalam Dekshakshams, which, which kind of were this wonderful mix of, I wouldn't say commercial, but mainstream and uh, like... I, like was, I was having a chat with my friend yesterday and I said, do anything in the next five years in Malayalam. Do mm. anything. Do a film without dialogues. Do a, f a film without music. Do a film without... Uh, do a black and white film again. So, I think... This is a time to explore everything. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, and don't, I mean, I, I don't think there's a point where we need to ask, should we, should we not? Just do it. People are ready. Mm -hmm. People are ready. The industry is ready. Uh, everything is, I think, the, the platform is set. We just need to go and explore it. Yes. Right. And let's not chase the 100 crore uh, thing. I mean, uh, let's just, just do some meaningful films. Yeah. yeah. Something yep. interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. But is that what you, see, because you're, a, you're, a, you're not just a, an actor, Fahad, you're a hero. As there's a difference between the two because an actor is somebody who comes and does a good job and goes. And a hero is somebody who also has a box of a stature. Mm. So you have to kind of, do you look at like whether when you sign a film, do you also look at, is this going to take me a little higher as a hero? I look at recovery. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it as a, I don't see a film as my personal growth or this can get me to the next level. No, I, I, I I would rather produce a film and so I get these highs producing films or you know so for me the high is not about me being good in a film uh, the high is about the film itself being you know insanely uh, different in you know uh, the wow factor or you know so whether it's Kumblangi Nights or any of the films that I've eventually acted in as a, as a producer <laughs> it's because we couldn't find any other actors. So Kumblangi Nights was written for another actor. And I mean, things never oh, fell in place. And thank God. Shams has turned around and asked, just come and do it now. <laughs> you know, that's how I did it. I want to be known for the films I make than the characters I play. Right. What I'm saying is, is there also the, the pre you don't put on yourself the pressure of, not when I say that, like if a film becomes a hit, like, like Avishams become a big hit. Uh -huh. So that means that you have reinforced the fact that, yes, audiences want to see me. Like I'm a, I'm a yes. star. Hmm. Isn't that important for a for a you as know, an like actor? You your kind of no, I'll, I'll reintroduce myself again after a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this. No, I don't want to do an Avisham again. I'm yeah. going to do uh, I'm, I, like I'm going to shoot with Altaf Salim, totally different film. Uh, you know, a boy meets girl kind of a. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so Avisham uh, will never decide what I do next. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, one of my favorite films of your last maybe five years is trance. Hmm. Because I like these I hear films that take a big swing. A lot you know, of people like, like his like, performance yeah. in that I have a crazy premise. I'm just mm. going to go all out with it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you're there. You're fully committed. Do you think today had that film been made, uh, maybe the audience would have come on board a little more? I have my reservations on dealing with religion in Kerala. I don't think... Uh, that works? No. I don't think... I don't think people would want to hear the harsh reality, if I may say, they want to be entertained. And what trans lacked after a point was that entertainment factor. Oh, there, was, right. there was a lot of awareness and things like that. But the entertainment factor was taken away from the film at some point. And that's where I think we failed. Mm. Having said that, I mean, a corrected second half trans would still make a lot of difference. But I wouldn't touch religion for a while in Kerala. Right, right, right. <laughs> now, in a recent interview, you said, I'm a better producer than I am an actor. What is that? I have so many limitations as an actor. So okay. many limitations. I have to keep asking my <laughs> DOP, what's the lens? Uh, how, how close are we? How far are we? Uh, so, there are so many things I can't... other actors do that too. Yeah, but I, I, I think uh, an actor shouldn't do that. Uh, I've never seen Mamudi Sir or Molal Sir doing that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, so, my, even my father too. says that, you know, the moment you l learn your lines and you're in front of the camera, you shouldn't be worrying about who's capturing you, what's been captured or how you've been captured, you know. Uh, so, I'm, I'm very conscious that way. I, I, uh, I ask my costumer, is it fitting well? You know, so, I, I keep 
discovering that there's so many limitations. I'm, I'm, I'm depending on so many people to I don't get think this. It's a limitation in your performance. As a producer, it's not like that. I, I yeah, he may feel like it's a limitation. I think it just has to do with him being self-conscious. Like you know, when and he doesn't have to be like, self-conscious as a producer. Uh, Dilish Pota and Asham is given absolute freedom to explore. Uh, it's totally different than staying in and controlling and doing a film. Right. You know, so. Uh, as a producer, I don't have any limitations. I'm, I'm willing to explore any which way. Right. But uh, I have to be very cautious about the kind of films I act in. When you're saying that, are you saying you're not a very comfortable actor? No, I, I am an actor because I didn't find any other job. I'm still but trying you to... You keep saying that, but <laughs> that's, that's, such a, that's such a ridiculously immodest thing to say, <laughs> considering like, what you've done. I didn't do it alone, right? So, it's no, so many other people, but and, you know. Films are a collaborative person. medium. Fahad, no, yeah. you know, directors can say, I did it alone. No, so, I, 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 I keep telling everyone, you know. So, can you ask Anwar Rashid to uh, do a scene of trance with another actor? I'm sure he'll produce the same intensity, because I know Anwar. How I went to Anwar and how Anwar got things out of me, I'm very, like, I clearly, I'm very aware of that. So I think he does that magic with any actor. So I, I, I don't know, it doesn't go to my head that... I mean, I'm not saying it should go to your head, mm. but I'm just saying that you must be aware that you're capable of executing a certain kind of... Uh, let, let me talk about that, like, for example, the, that dumb charade scenes mm -hmm. in uh, Avesham, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it starts off as, as fun, mm -hmm. but then there's a very crucial aspect mm -hmm. of yours that yeah. where what was very striking for me was the intensity that you maintain mm -hmm. Both when, because you are getting exasperated, mm -hmm. something in you is, wants to burst out, mm -hmm. but you want to keep the fun going. Yeah. But that fun, afterward, it becomes frustration. Yeah, you're almost yeah. like looking like you want to kill somebody. Yeah, yeah. But then the yeah. fun returns. Yeah, yeah. That's a very bizarre and wonderful scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, tell me how, you, are you going to say again that it was all Jitu or? See, the intention of the scene was given to you, right? I mean, uh, even during the first narration, the scene was there. So the, the purpose of the scene was clearly told to you. So the only thing I asked was to what extent can I pull it? Like, uh, how, how far can I take it? What Jitu told me is just, just take it to the max. Just take it till one of the actors sort of, you know, uh, break down or uh, laugh out or, you know. So that, I mean, when he said that, we all knew that, okay, fine. We, ha we had to play this in a way that this... There's so much more drama than what we actually, uh, what what he's actually written. So, when you have a, you know, description like that, it's easy to. So, if, what if uh, Jitu had written? Uh, this has to be very controlled. Uh, Ranga has to be sitting. Ranga shouldn't be moving. Ranga has to sit in one chair and do this. Then this whole thing would be so difficult. So, like again, the the stage was set. He yeah. said, you know, just just do it. Just do it. <laughs> so. It's not as simple it's as you're not making enough it that there, I understand. but not every actor can do what you do. No, you can't just put anybody in there and because the script was good and the director's yeah. good, the performance is going to be good. <laughs> no, he's a humble person. You obviously read, read what it's the actor's script is, and then you have your talk with the director, and then what happens to you? Is what do you See, I wanted the boys to get scared. Okay. But at the same time, at the end of the thing, I wanted the audience to laugh. Right. The, the, I wanted these two meeting points. Uh, in that scene, this is, I mean, my connect to the audience is these two points. Right. And I think we try to crack that, I think. Right. And that's that's something that you say that this is what I want. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I played around, so, you know, and they'll pick up, you know, so at some point, Jitu will say, oh, this is the one, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Right, so right. I, I, don't, I don't go to sets with a definite uh, pattern. I keep telling them, you know, let's try this, let's try this. So, in fact, I'm... You know, shooting you're a good actor. Uh, <laughs> Sukusa is like, so what do you want to do? I say, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So you do three, four <laughs> options and we'll decide. So I, I find it, uh, so when you go to buy something at a shop, uh, whatever it is that you want to buy, you don't buy the first thing you see, right? You look at options. And, right. So, I mean, it's, I think uh, that's very important for a scene as well. You see multiple uh, variations and, you know, then you lock on a meter. Right. For me, it very constantly happens. And I, I'm a person who goes back to reshoot the first day work and all that. So it's primarily because there's a, there's a meter I try to crack. Right. And that's very important. That me meter needs to ally with the other actors as well. Right. And it's just not easy to just, you know, get there. Right. So even with the scene, what I'm trying to... You, you would have seen this variation of Ranga and another scene also. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it so, doesn't. It's not, it's not coming up. Yeah, just absolutely, there. absolutely. Right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. So the reason you say that sometimes you go back and reshoot things that you've done on the first day shoot, mm -hmm. maybe three three weeks later, is that because after the first the day more. shoot and maybe during let's say the second week or something, that's when you crack the meter. Yeah. And yeah. so you want that earlier scene also to be uh, really nice to have that luxury to okay. go back um, and be able to I reshoot. I have evidently yeah. uh, that happens that, all the time. Uh, I understand the character much better. First day shoot, well, you know and if he's producing, yeah. he, he gets that call. After enacting or uh, embodying after playing that. around, and yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I, I always get this clarity after yep. playing around with other actors. Mm -hmm. uh, Nyan Prakashan. I went to Satyan and said, I want to reshoot one, you know, one of the scenes we did earlier. And he said, Why? No, it's only when I did a scene with Srinir and I understood, you know, this has to be the meter. So that always happens. That right. always happens. And, uh, Avesh, I mean, in all my films, I've reshot here. Yeah. So, right. right. <laughs> By now, and surprisingly, I, I, um, I, I did an audition uh, for a foreign uh, production house. Uh, I'm not using any name. So, this is the first time ever I did an audition. And they gave me a scene, and I don't know, I mean, very sweet people, all of them, very sweet, and you know. So, I, I got a scene, and I don't know anything before the scene or after the scene. No, nope. correct. I know a big actor is doing that scene, and uh, the scene is with me, or I have to do that scene with him. And that's when I realized that even my closest friend cannot crack me with just a scene. Like, he comes and gives me a scene, I will not be able to crack anything. I have to evolve. Like, you know, uh, I'm not saying it's You're good or bad, but artist. this is that's, my that's method, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with this method. Well, fair enough, because, yeah. see, you indirectly gave, I was going to ask you what your yeah, general process sucks. in approaching us thing is. Yeah. Basically, you're saying that I have to live with that character for absolutely, a while absolutely. in front of the camera, yeah. and once I live with that character for a while, I slowly start finding the little Ab things absolutely. that, that absolutely. for That's example, that common. grin and... and mo mo mostly, more than me finding it, I let others see it. It's easier for me to judge, you know. Right. A lot of so, don't because have I'm the not a person being who able to go back, though. Part of his process is being I, told I, I what with, the character is. I, I yeah. go with yeah. capturing, you know, right. like, I, I believe the the most beautiful thing about filmmaking is capturing. Right. You know? It's a slightly hard process, but it's fun. It's right. really, yeah. I, but you're not one of those people who romanticizes acting and all that. No. It's a job. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, you haven't worked with the. Uh, Mahmoodi Mohanlal, so I have to ask you this with veterans from another language. Now, you worked with Kamalas and you worked with Rajnikanta. I have worked with Mahmoodi, sir. You worked with Mahmoodi, sir? Uh, Emmanuel. Oh, long back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, when Ooh. you you watch Kamalas and act, Mahmoodi, uh, Mohanlal act, Rajnikanth act now, as an actor, what is it, do you think, they bring to their scenes? Hmm. Are you able to kind of look at them as not just a fan, but as an actor? When I see each of them perform individually, it's not that I do. I don't get their process or the method, how they. But I understand how they are so sincere in front of camera. Like they're very honest in front of camera, and that's because they purely believe everyone is equal in front of camera. Uh, whether it's Rajni sir or Kamal sir or Mamuka sir, I mean, <coughs> they come and they, they they explore the scene. They ask the other actors. Excuse me. So there is a there is a sort of Kaya discussion Dutter. which actually makes you feel uh, okay. We all are the same here. That, and that eases out a lot of things. And I've, I've noticed this with all three of them. I mean, I'm sure Lalsa also has that. Or, I mean, the other stars in, I mean, stars in Telugu or in Bombay will also have that. But my situation was a little different when I met them. Uh, so, when I first uh, worked with Mamuka, I think uh, I had already done Diamond Necklace and Anem Rasulam. So, uh, he was... He, he, we were at a point where he wanted to discuss and he wanted to know, uh, you know, my uh, process and all that. By the time I met Kamal sir, I'd, I'd done uh, See You Soon and, you know. Uh, Rajni sir, I keep asking, sir, have you seen any of my films? No, 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 I don't want to see your films, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not seen any of your films? He's seen, uh, he's seen Vikram and uh, Mamanan and all that. Okay, okay. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, not the films that made you. Yeah. No, but he's, I, th I think he's heard about me, I guess, but... Regardless, uh, for me, it's just absolutely brilliant just just seeing them learn a line and deliver it. So when they do that, for me, it's, uh, you know, it, it's the history of cinema that runs through me, you know. When Rajni sir, does, you know, he, he stands there and does this and all that. It's, for me, it's, it's so unreal for me, you know. So 
I am tripping on all that. Then, you know, what I am discovering or learning, uh, for me, it's the, the uh, witnessing all this itself is a... Right. You know, but you're also saying that in a way it comes back to your own philosophy that that they're also collaborative actors in turn. Absolutely. See, the intention of me going there is not to do a Basha or a Tevar Magan or anything. I, I, it's pure talent collaboration. Just want to go there and uh, interact with them and, you know, uh, talk to them. And I'm very fortunate that I have that relation with all of them now. Like, you know, I just go to them and ask them, so how do you shoot the sequence in Tevar Magan or in Nayagin? And he'll have an answer, you know. So. That 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 was what I wanted always, you know, uh, absolute talent collaboration where I can go discuss my stuff, they can come discuss their stuff, and that's happening. Uh, that's very clearly happening. Right. But what you call talent collaboration, there are certain websites, especially in the Malayalam industry, that that kind of keep raising this question, you know, why is Fahad going and acting in like relatively supporting roles in language uh, in other language films, and like, how do, you, how do you answer that? Well, like, why can't you come and act in Malayalam films in bigger roles is what the, their question is. Their anguish, I think, I don't know. So, uh, I don't work on timelines. I have no sense of timelines. I never finish things on time. I never start things on time. Like all that, there's no plan for all this. I'm just doing things that I'm excited about. And, and evidently, I, I, I tell my audience, my commitment to them is just, I'll try and make the film watchable. I don't want them to think about me otherwise. I don't want them to think what, you know, worry about what I'm doing with my life. Uh, just don't take me seriously when you leave theatres. Right. Just think about me in the theatre, that's all. And I, do, I don't want, I don't want people to, just, you know, uh, talk about actors or performance uh, on the dining table, you know. Let, let them just discuss in the theatre or maybe on the way back home, the drive, you know. Not more than that, cinema is not beyond that, you know. Cinema has a limit and let's just... <laughs> Put it there. <laughs> you, that's not how a cinephile operates. <laughs> the point of, of, of no, that's, what, that's what I want to change. You know, that's what I, I'm not saying I want to change, but there's more that you can do with your life than watching. You know, oh, definitely. See, the thing is, but <laughs> but the point is, if a medium, it could be anything. It could be writing. It could be whatever photography. It could be anything, right? If, the, most no, people so, have music, for instance. Like no, cricket does just about music. Cricket does twenty times of what cinema does. You mean in terms of money? Everything. Yeah. Cricket does 20 you know, times of what cinema right. but, but the point is, if something obsesses you, you, you end up talking about this batsman's, uh, you know, yeah. strokes or yeah. play, the way he approaches a shot, the Absolutely. way he did that in the previous uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. game. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. it's not. So I'm, so, I'm saying that for me, the way you acted in Navesham versus the way you approach the role in Pushpa, the similar larger than so life. That, the way, that, so, that's... I, mean, I don't think it's a waste of time. Yeah, I so think that, the life of that should be... Till I do an next film, not not till I do my. Uh, Why? You know, uh, right, but because he works you are in films, he doesn't a need to constantly talk about it. evolving <laughs> actor, and the films are also constantly evolving because audiences change, new directors come in, they breathe in new blood. It's fascinating to look at things in a continuum rather than just that particular. Uh, oh, Fahad Avesham. Yeah, it'd be like. Hit, let's move on. Once you know, there will be blood I, came out. Stop talking about gangs like, in New York. Done. Now let him come with something else. <laughs> <laughs> Why think about him? Um, you know? I, I think we have a long conversation just after no, the I, 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 Amir does this. I mean, at least Amir used to do that in 2000s and all that. He would disappear after Lagan and Dil Chata Hai and come with a Mangal Pandey, again disappear and come back with, uh, you know. So That's a filmmaker. I think I've heard Dilip Sir does that. Dilip Kumar Sahib used to do that. Uh, I like that. You like that? I like that. I don't want anyone to talk about me or celebrate me or anything. Just watch my films and that too, only if it's good. <laughs> and if it's not good, don't Because he works in films. Very clear about he doesn't that. want to talk yeah. about right. it. When you say that uh, <laughs> you accept films because it gives you the chance to do something that's new, right? But with films, some films like Avesham, for instance, do you also have a gut feeling that I think this film is really going to break out? I think this film is going to become like quite a big hit. Does that happen? I had that with Kumlangi. Okay. I had that with Kumbhangi, I had that with Bharatan. In fact, I had it with Trans, but I was wrong. But with Trans, I thought, that's what, that's what you know, with religion, you shouldn't take religion or any such thing as a uh, setting for a film. It can only be a factor. But you've also had movies like Ayurveda Pustakam, I think, which kind of looked at Job's story through yeah, a... Yeah, 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 yeah. But there was no religion or anything, I mean... Uh, it, oh, you mean in the movie? In the film, yeah, yeah, in the okay, film. Okay. yeah. yeah. 
so I, I, I generally have that. I had that with Nyan Prakash. And like I said, the artistic side is there. The other side is more active. Like I spoke about the recovery and all that. Right, right? Right. So I'm, I'm very active that way. I, I, I'm very sharp with numbers. So, so I, I'm very conscious that way. I, I'm worried about the recoveries. The costing and Producer. everything. Right. So I, I, I'm, I'm involved in that. Uh, right. Right. So much, supposing yeah. you are, like producing, uh, like l let's say a movie with, forget Avesha because that gives you a gut feeling. But let's say you're producing a movie that, you're like, okay, I like this movie, but I'm not so sure. Then you'll work accordingly so that the costs are manageable. Yeah. yeah absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Can you name a movie that you did that way? Malayengunya. Malayengunya. I was mm. going to just say that. Yeah. 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 Very. I mean. For Rahman and everyone was there, but the scale it, of the film. Yeah, is, scale of the film. Also, it's it's not an easy to film to watch. You know, it's not very easy. It's, a lot of people uh, complain about claustrophobia and things like that. So, yeah. So such models. Yeah, we 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 prepare ourselves. You know. I mean. Right. There have been a bunch of Malayalam film directors uh, that I like a lot, and I cannot name now. But you know a lot of them, and you worked with a lot of them, that have come to me and said. Not come to me, as in when I met them at festivals and other things. They all say that they all want to make a certain kind of movie, but the market's kind of pushing them to make a slightly different kind of movie. And I go back to the word that you said early on, which is entertaining. As long as something is entertaining, it's being consumed by the audience. Has entertainment in some way become a must? And if so, how do you define entertainment? For example, let's take Arjji with a big blockbuster. How would you define the word entertainment effect? with respect to that? Because in a way. <laughs> The survival aspect mirrors that of Malayan Kunya. Yeah. The scale is different. All that is different. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah, you look yeah. at the basic story of, Still so entertaining. Uh, I think by entertaining, isn't it just good enough that you hijack the audience? Even if it's just for a scene, if you can just totally get them into the film. Okay. Uh, for me, that's entertainment. You know, you can't have the audience with you. Schindler's List is entertaining. Thirty minutes running time or anything, but. Wherever you can actually, I mean, you 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 make the film like that, right? You with the hope that end of this act, audience are going to get locked in. End of this act, you know, th there's a relief point for them, and again they'll get in. So uh, when you plan a uh, screenplay, these moments are there, and while you're shooting it, for me, uh, it's about okay. Let's see the possibility of this moment. Let's see how much can we connect to the audience, right? Whether it's Ardhi Jeevitham or uh, Maluti or Malayanunya or uh, Manjimal Boys, I think the entertainment factor was that uh, audience at some point getting locked into it. Right. And that I didn't, and see, and that needs to be built on. You know, right. that 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 has to go on to emotional level. That has, you know, if need be, that has to go on to a revenge level. Or you know, I mean, it depends on the story that you're narrating. But the basic entertainment is to actually. Lock in the audience with your main act at some point. Right, right. That's that's an interesting definition because typically when people say entertainment, they mean you laugh, you cry. That so that's all. I've I've read. I think so. Manisha in one of the interviews said music brings in a lot of relief. So that that is also a factor. Maybe like I said, that that connect you want with the audience is a relief point. Right. So, so the music can be one of the aspects. So. Uh, different directors use different tricks for this. Uh, there are directors who just use a dissolve and hold a uh, black screen for two seconds. Right. Uh, you know, so different people have different methods to crack this. Uh, but these are the moments. I mean, you should know about that before you start your film, where you're actually trying to uh, bring in the audience and you know just just lock them totally. Right. Uh, so I mean, you discover these points and then then. Sort of, right. So, by like in these many many years of acting in movies, being part of movies as producers, being a director's son, all that, seeing all that, do you think now you have a fair idea of what entertainment is and how to lock an audience? Sir, the thing about what what still, I still have to look at a mirror before I give a shot. I still have to uh, ask my costume guy, and there are boys who do this so easily in front of a selfie cam. They don't care. They're so organically. They're doing it. They go around. They show things, and I don't know how to how they do that. You know, so it's changing in in a pace that's that's difficult for us to catch up with. I mean, when I say this, uh, I'm sure 
writers are experiencing this or the musicians are experiencing this. Uh, so the world of the society is evolving at a pace where uh, catching up is hard, but uh, there is so much to re uh, reflect on or, you know, there's so much to discuss in this, uh, you know, because there's so much change happening. Right. There's so much to discuss. Right. Um, so I think it will go <laughs> entirely, I think, you know. So when you were on the sets of Aveshyam and the three boys are there, mm. who are all like YouTube, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, that yeah, generation, yeah, yeah, right? Stars, yeah, yeah, what, 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 was, Did you see that difference? Absolutely. The, I mean, so one time we were shooting next to a school and I was in the vanity. I was calling for the shot and suddenly they came in and said, no, no, don't come. The school just left. And I said, yeah, so, but, you know, I'm sitting in the vanity, so it's a big deal. So, uh, uh, hipster. Uh, Apparently, he's so popular with the younger crowd, and that too, it, it was not a, uh, it was Bangalore, not Malayalam kids, Malayali kids. <coughs> and he was, kids came in, they stood just to see him, say hi to him, just wave at him. So, everyone is a star in their own way, right. and you know, uh, and I, I always tell people, you know, uh, the younger generation, they don't, they're not bothered about the camera, they're not bothered about the lens, they're not, they're not conscious, like, you know, because they've been seeing and involving with this for a long time. Uh, it doesn't matter to them right. uh, uh, how they're captured or... Uh, and I, I see that with a lot of talents now. I, I mean, Avesham also. Uh, these boys, they, I've never seen them going and asking where's the camera or what's the lens or... Uh, even when I run to the monitor after every shot, they're not bothered. They're just there, you know. And I think that's very fortunate that you can perform and not worry about anything a monitor else. watcher. I think that's magical. <clears throat> but that might make your life a little easier, no? If you could... If relax. I can do... Oh, yeah. If I can give a shot and not be worried about how it is, that's dream. I'll, I'll quit after that. So, would you <laughs> say that there's also a bit of control, a bit of a control freak in you that wants things to be a certain way? I'm a bit of OCD. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's there. Right. A lot of people find it hard, uh, but... so. Now you found your way, right? You know, so... Right. But other directors who came and say, okay, Fahad, I know you're trying for... You want this take, but I'm going to stick with my decision of this take because for me, that works. Every director has told me that. Okay. Every director. Everyone has a different way of saying this. Jitu uh, Madhavan, maybe he'll say, no, 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 it's okay. I, I like that. Let's go with that. Uh, Anwar would say, I got what I wanted. Now, if you want to explore, we'll explore. So, everyone has a different way of saying that. Dilish has a different way of saying it. So, yeah, so, it's, it's a it's trial and error. <laughs> yeah. In Avesham itself, was there any one scene that you say was the most difficult thing to play? Because it involved a lot of physicality. There yeah, were these yeah. single shot, you know, single take things. So, Avesham itself had a lot of difficult... So, you know, sometimes we wonder, this guy needs to be funny or does he needs to look, uh, uh, you know, more... Uh, I mean, does he have to be a hero kind of a guy? Does he have to be a villain? Or So, this was a... We, I mean, he could be anything. And it was important for us to choose on a flavour and play around with it. So, so it was very difficult, you know. I mean, it's, uh, so now we have to do a part two, it's easy. But now, uh, I mean... To get into a, to give him a structure with all these emotional, uh, you know, or the dark side of his past or his innocence or uh, his foolishness, to package everything into that uh, form was a little difficult, but now, I mean, it'll be a cakewalk if you have to do a part two. Right, but w w is just to take us through it, is there one point which you can just remember offhand where you kind of found it a little difficult to get into that scene or mode or zone or... So, the mother's thing... Um, so, there was a sequence, uh, I mean, in the climax where I cried. <laughs> uh, I just didn't want to hear that. Three different timelines, like, because I look... Three different looks. It's a single shot, but it had to be shot in three different timelines. So, every shot had to have that uh, intensity of... This, this man being alone, you know, he, his mother left him or his brother he trusted left him or the boys he trusted left him. For me, it was very, very difficult to get that aspect that this man is alone, this man is alone. And he's never been alone in the film. Right. There are three scenes where you see him alone. One, he's dancing 
after the shower or getting ready. Then you see him uh, sitting and eating. Then there is a sequence where he, he, Bibi calls him. These are the only three scenes in Aveshim you see him alone. Yeah. Otherwise, he's never alone, you know, like... Uh, so, to make him... To make audience believe that he is alone with a with a shot mm -hmm. was very difficult. I mean that that matching that aspect was a little difficult. For Across me. The, those three, I I, had, I asked him for a scene from the past. Or I said, don't you think a scene with his mother would make a lot more impact than a shot like this? And he said, it's so easy. Anyone can do that. Uh, so Actually, then, that's true. Yeah, anyone can do that. <laughs> yeah, and that, that shocked me. And he just sat in front of me. He said, a flashback. Anyone can do that, right? And then they has a point then. That's how we try and... Right, so the, you have to bring the flashback into your... In, in, in a shot. Yeah. In a shot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, now that we've discovered you don't like talking about films, <laughs> what are your, some of your favourite Indian or international films in the sense of what's, what of the films that have made Fahad go, I would love to be a part of something like this? Cinema Paradiso. Oh. Okay. It changed my life. It changed your life. It changed my life. What yeah. a film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I still wish to give the audience who watch my film what I felt watching Cinema Paradiso. And you know... You, you feel you haven't done that? Oh, no, not anywhere close to... Not in, I have not changed anyone's life. Cinema Paradiso has changed my life. But I'll, how can you say that, Fahad? The other person has to say that. Exactly. I've not met anyone. <laughs> 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 I've changed my wife's life. When <laughs> <laughs> or my... Uh, yeah, so... I mean, I'm talking about the impact a film did to me. Um, also, Amor Sparrows or... Uh, a lot of films, I mean, you know. Uh, but I, what I wish for is that uh, what these films did to me, before I quit, I just... But at least one of my films, I want to give that experience to the audience. Right, right. Uh, Do you have any plans to direct films? I can't direct. You can't? I can't. You'd, Again, is it the OCD thing or...? I can't direct, I'm not... Uh, but how do you know that? Sham yeah. says that I can write. Uh, but he's never offered a film or anything. But, but have you written on your films? Not but acting is a form of writing. Yeah, that's what, that's what. So you, sometimes you write and you give them your draft and, you know, so it's not evidently right, right, but yeah. So, thank you for being <laughs> here and having a difficult time with this interview. <laughs> but, but I just have to ask you this finally. What does it feel like when you always run into articles or people talking about Fahad Fasil's eyes? I have my mother's eyes and no one saw, saw it till I was 30 years, I think. <laughs> and so it's a shock for me, you know. What is that they see that no one else saw for the first 30 years of my life? No one spoke about it in school or college or, you know. Uh, I think it's uh, thanks to whoever invented Ari, you know. <laughs> and, it's the lenses and the camera and the uh, shift to digital cinema that's right. helped me, I guess. But thank you for your time, Fahad. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, looking forward to your big lineup this year. You What's have uh, <laughs> uh, Pushpa 2 yeah. with Alu Arjun. You have Vertian with uh, Rajnikanth. You have... And I have a beautiful small film with Altaf Selim. Oh, that's the one that you want. I'm going to start, you, gonna start shooting start. that. That's, that's going to be out this year as well? Uh, we're trying end of the year, but yeah. Okay. I also have a very... Cute film with Buddy Wales uh, that I'm doing in Tamil. Okay. Yeah. So. That's also this year. Wow, that's a busy year. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's I'm right, almost time to watch uh, done with those films. I, you know, hardly have another schedule, but all fun films. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm, Thank I'm you. I'm happy. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. GT Holidays. <laughs> Super interesting. Yeah. I don't know how many Alpha interviews we've ever seen. I don't. I can't think. recall one. There has to be one. I don't think so. At least not in English, for sure. Maybe he was on a panel. I can't recall. Because I don't ever recall hearing him talk this much in English. No. Um, I knew he knew how to speak English, obviously, but getting to know his English-speaking voice, which is obviously different than your Malayalam-speaking voice, or um, it, it, first thing, he talks kind of similar to Johnny Depp. A little bit. Uh, 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 Lots of uh, um, and uh, start a thought and stop a thought uh, and then restart yeah, a, in a different uh, thought. Uh, yeah, they're they're thinking and that's an audible way to um, show that. And don't and don't find it easy to formulate thought into spoken word in a fluid way that they're confident is going to convey what they're thinking because they they're thinking about so much 
simultaneously. Yeah, I mean, he speaks very good English. Oh, very good English. Um, like he he could probably do an American accent very easily because uh, uh, his English speaking voice he, he actually doesn't have that much of an accent mm. uh, on it. So I think uh, if he ever does decide to do any English stuff, he could probably do it pretty easily. Um, his acting philosophy is very funny. Well, um, I, it's also a, quite absurd that he seems to be of the opinion that the reason he's such a good actor is because of everybody else and that if you just put anybody in that position, they'd be a good actor too because of everybody else and that's just not the case. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a collaborative art form, but if you're not a good actor, it doesn't matter who you're working with. You could be working with the best of the best. If you can't bring it, forget it. Yeah, he. you could tell he's very humble Yeah. Um, because... Uh, yeah, you can't just put anybody in no. front of the camera and expect them to do what Fahat Fasil has no, done. No. It is very interesting, though, that he's so, I don't want to say the word uncomfortable, um, or maybe not as confident, maybe, as I thought he would be in front of camera, considering he wants everybody else's opinion. He, oh, he's yeah. apparently a monitor watcher, um, which, you know, everybody has a different look on that um how they uh but he clearly wants to see it uh for himself yeah um and then he's always talking about uh how does my how does my hair look how does my costume look how does my um all that look it's it's not what i expected. that's his ocd yeah yeah that's his ocd i think because i have a feeling he can't relinquish those thoughts because of the ocd so for example someone like me who does not have that and you tell me if you have this if I'm, I go to costuming, costuming's done. I don't think about it again because I trust the costumer. We do a shot. I don't need to see it unless the director tells me. Take a look at this and tell me what you think. I don't need to go see the shot. Yeah. Um, I just I'll ask, and I will want to know what the frame is for a shot because it's interesting for me to know how tight things are and where I can or can't move if I'm going to be you know, but I. Yeah. I don't. I don't think the minute I have answers to those things, I don't think about them again. And I think he's constantly thinking about them. Yeah, he is, uh, which is so strange because he seems, and maybe obviously he is while he's acting. He seems so loose and so like, um, in the moment he might be obviously it, during that moment. But then in the moment, after, right. after it's cut, then cut it's like, back to how was it? Was it was it good? Yeah, I don't was know. My, was That's my makeup it, okay? Was my then was my costume okay? That's what it was. Seems the lighting like. okay? Yeah. Whatever his process is, it works incredibly well. Yeah. <laughs> but it is so interesting because that's not what I expected. Yeah. And he also compares himself to, he's like, I've never seen Mohanlal or, or Mahmoodi do what I do. Yeah. So clearly I'm not as good as them. Right. Which is ridiculous. He is. <laughs> um, but he, obviously, he's never going to say that. Those are his idols, probably. Uh, you're, you're probably never going to go up to, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis and be like, I'm as good as you, Daniel Day-Lewis, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I think that's why he likes the producing aspect of it, because that is more in tune. He doesn't ever have to shut the OCD off when he's producing. Yeah. He has to as an actor. Mm -hmm. He has to focus on just the acting part when it's action time. But as a producer, yeah. he can be thinking about everybody's costuming, everybody's lighting, everybody's camera angles, everybody's, you know. Yeah. And I think he enjoys, he feels more free doing yeah. that yeah yeah i don't i don't typically look at the monitor um unless they want me to come look at it obviously. i like watching finished product yeah when all is said and done i like seeing when it's done but i don't have to see a thing unless the director says would you like to see it or i want you to see this because it's going to inform you on what i'm doing yeah yeah i don't i don't need to see it otherwise. i'll if like i as an actor you know if something doesn't feel right in this scene. of course Immediately. Immediately. Um, you're like, uh, after it's, it's done, not working, like, it's not like, justified. How'd that feel? And I'm like, it didn't. Yeah. Can we do it again? Yeah. And then you can add, because you, no. you can tell uh, as an yeah. actor if something is good. Yeah. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't say everybody has to feel this way, but my feeling is that it, it, even if, if, even if I didn't feel it, I don't need to do another take so that I feel it. What matters to me is did the director get what they wanted? Yeah. So I may have not felt it, but if the director liked it and said cut, I move on because the yeah. director got what they wanted. I think that's, I it's how I think he is in a way um, because he, he apparently completely trusts his directors. Yeah, uh, in in what they what they want, but yeah, he, you could tell he's clearly also thinking about all this other stuff uh, after cut, um, yeah. and it's it's not uncommon. Uh, very OCD uh, sounds like, um, which is funny. Why usually people that are really OCD would make Quite good directors. Yeah, it's um, interesting. He wouldn't like to be a director. 
Maybe it's the confidence thing. Maybe. He doesn't, because he's not confident that he can do all this stuff. And so he's like, oh, how could I be a director mm. in charge of all this? Right. Um, I think, which is crazy, because he's one of the greatest actors in India. Yeah. Uh, to, and then to come off as like, I, he doesn't seem as confident as somebody as great as he is, I would think would be. It, maybe it's just ridiculously humble. Uh, maybe that's what it is. Um, but... It's not a bad thing, <laughs> like like at all. You, you know, your people are who they are. Um, it's just crazy because you know this is the first, maybe the first time we've ever seen an interview of him. So everything else we'd ever seen was just his film work. Yeah, and that is not the vibe that he gave me from his film work. He gave me like you know Nawaz or, or people that he, Nawaz is shy. I feel like, but. Um, uh, but, but I think there's a difference in that Nawaz knows he's a good actor. Yeah. I think Nawaz is a good actor. You think Fafar doesn't that. know he's a good actor? I think, I think. Not even just good, he's a great actor. I think he has a blissful unawareness born of what? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I do think, based on what he was saying here, that he, he genuinely equates the predominant contributor of his greatness as an actor to be the people he works with, not what he brings to the table. I think he made that clear because he felt that yeah. anybody could just, if you work with the right people, the things are going to be great. Um, and that, uh, I mean, partially too, film is the most collaborative art form there is. It is. And it's not just you. <laughs> no. Obviously out there. But, you know, taking no credit at all for what you do. Yeah, that's that's just <laughs> not real. That's just not realistic. You have to accept the fact. I mean, you know. The greats aren't going to toot their own horn, but they are going to say, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's 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 not arrogance. It's just a, a sense of confidence and knowing you do what you do and that you bring something to the table that's going to contribute to it. And he clearly is not a cinephile. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> he clearly is not a cinephile in any way. <laughs> yeah, to say that you watch a film. It's just because I think he works on the films, and so that's how he is. He works on the films. That film was now done. There's there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of actors that are just, yeah, I went, I got my, my check, and I was done, and I don't think about it again. Yeah, that's just um, who they are. Um, and so I think that's... No, I'm, I'm not saying he's that, but there are people who just don't... The, the, <laughs> he just doesn't want people to talk about anything old. <laughs> yeah. But then he goes back and talks about how wonderful Cinnamon... Cinema Paradiso was. You're not supposed to do yeah, that. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. If you're using your own theory, <laughs> you should have seen it and moved on. <laughs> and um, cinema's not that important. You just said that movie changed your life. What's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's I think a lot I think of he it just is. Don't want people talking about him. I, I think the majority of that is born from he 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 wants to re remain humble and not. And tell people, look, I'm not as big a deal as you think I am. And, that, and that's okay. I actually believe that he thinks that as well. Yeah. Um, it's uh, a lot of actors, even though um, a lot of actors are the exact opposite in terms of they're very boastful and out in the open. and But there's also a ton that are that way. Yeah. They're like, I'm here to do my work. I don't want to be talked about. Johnny Depp is that way. Um, <laughs> he doesn't want to be... Uh, he doesn't, one, ever watch any of his films. He doesn't think he's really that Harrison Ford's that been that great. way. Yeah, Harrison Ford doesn't watch his stuff. Yeah, Harrison Ford just doesn't understand why anybody cares about anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Fucking weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's it was super interesting um, listening to him. Because um, I don't think we'd ever... If we have, it's been a long time. Because he just doesn't do them often. He doesn't. He doesn't do very many interviews, which is um, sad for me, because I would love to talk to Fafa. Yeah. Um. I, I, I more to talk to him now as well. To yes. Just, what, uh, I'd love to explore those philosophies Absolutely. a little bit more, uh, especially somebody coming from somebody that I hold as one of the greatest actors in Indian cinema and in the world. Um. It's uh, be fun to dissect all that. Mm. Um. And just he seems like an really nice person so anyways let us know what you thought about the uh interview there uh what other interviews would we watch which would be our next fafa obviously we know that one that he's talked about there uh, yeah very excited about that film we did not get it so 
Maybe a watch along when it comes yeah. out. Um, it seems to be the common theme of this year. Yeah, uh, really. <laughs> Uh, especially for Molly. Thus far for Molly Allen Cinema. Cinema. Yeah. Um, let us know uh, what other interviews we can watch and should be our next Fafa film that we should watch. Let us know down below. Josh!